All right, so once you hit that debt ceiling, you can't borrow anymore. Not a great scenario for the world's biggest economy. So are we going to lift it soon? And what are the realistic chances of a disastrous default if we don't? Well, joining us now is Maya McGuinness, president of the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget. Good to have you on the show. So as we look at this very limited time we have before a new Congress kicks in, what could Congress do right now to manage this? Well, there certainly is the opportunity for Congress to go ahead and lift the debt ceiling now. And they should, because frankly, we should never be waiting until anything close to the last minute to lift the debt ceiling. Failing to do so, getting in a standoff, roiling markets has huge costs, even short of the sort of inconceivable scenario of our actual defaulting. So what we always do is we wait until the last minute and we actually use these extraordinary measures where the government is shifting money from one trust fund to another. We should break that habit immediately. And Congress should lift the debt ceiling as soon as possible, whether it's in December with the Democrats still in control, or we should do it early in January. We should not wait till the last minute. All that said, this is a really important time to stop and take stock of the fact that our fiscal situation is out of control with our debt growing faster than the overall economy. And all of that borrowing is contributing to the upward pressure on inflation. So if we could responsibly use the debt ceiling increase to also take an assessment of where we are fiscally and make some changes to improve our fiscal trajectory, that would be two important things that we would be able to accomplish. But they cannot wait until the last moment. They need to get started on that kind of a discussion as quickly as possible. And Maya, you mentioned some of the changes. What changes would you like to see in a bill versus what we're actually likely to get, is particularly in January? Yeah, well, what we've seen for the past four out of six debt ceiling increases, in fact, is that they lifted the debt ceiling. And keep in mind, the debt ceiling is merely approving borrowing, the, the ability to borrow for borrowing that has already been put into law. So it has to get done. And all contributions from all parties of borrowing have made that situation that the debt was so high. But for four of the past six debt ceiling increases, they also put in policies that increase the debt as well. And this is like the kind of negotiating you can only see in Washington where both sides make things worse and they, they, they tell themselves they've done a great job for working on things together. What we should do is put in either policy changes, maybe some kind of spending caps, look at shaving off some of the tax breaks that are out there, or what might be easier and has worked in the past is let's put in some process changes. There are a number of commission ideas out there. One, the Trust Act. It's bipartisan, it's bicameral, and it says if there's any trust funds that are headed towards insolvency, let's work on averting those the, that insolvency by making some changes. Doesn't dictate the outcomes, but says we actually have to pay attention instead of kicking the can. So a process like that, or a broader fiscal commission, or a commission, for instance, that would focus on how to get economic growth going and inflation under control, that would be a really smart thing to pass at the same time we pass a debt ceiling increase. And Maya, for the average person, when they're hearing about the national debt, it doesn't really, the dots don't really connect as to how it affects their everyday lives. Put to, put to us, what exactly is at stake here? Yeah, that's exactly right, that this is not the issue that's front and center for most American families that are struggling with the, the daily challenges of the economy. But actually, the debt is the foundation of the entire economy in that it affects everything. So it affects growth. If our debt is too high, it slows economic growth. If our debt is too high, it pushes up inflation and pushes up interest rates, things we're seeing right now. It means that we're not as able to respond to the next crisis, like, for instance, during COVID or the Great Recession, we borrowed a lot, and that's exactly what we should have done. But in order to be ready to borrow for the next emergency, we have to be more responsible when the economy is strong, like it is now. And finally, it leaves us dependent on borrowing from other countries overseas. Um, and some of those countries are starting to pull back on, on their willingness to borrow to the U.S. That's going to increase our cost of capital. And all of that trickles down to if it costs the government more to borrow, it's going to cost you more to borrow to get a mortgage for your house to borrow for you know whatever conserve, consumer durables, the car, credit cards, all of those things ripple down. The, the effect ends up hitting consumers and it lowers our standard of living and it makes uh, the cost of a lot of things we're borrowing for much more expensive today. And when you have governments and individuals living overseas also owning about a third of national debt as well, what are some of the risks that come with that to financial markets? Well, it certainly means that you have other countries that have more power over the, the interest rates and the, the stability of U.S. Uh, financial markets. 
But let me point out, it's particularly troublesome when some of the countries that we're borrowing from are not aligned with us uh, in terms of our global goals. And so it's become a geopolitical risk, which is why we've had num a number of people from the um, national security agencies say that the single biggest threat we are facing in the country is our high and unsustainable debt levels. That makes us dependent on other countries. And if we're not aligned with them, because economics is really the new way of um, having dealing with diplomacy and national security, it makes us much more vulnerable in all of those uh, global situations, both economically and in terms of national security. That is not a position we wanna put ourselves in. And for some reason, we are doing so of our own accord. All we need to do is gradually put in place a plan that would bring our debt down, stop borrowing for everything. If something's worth doing, it's worth paying for. And we could start to get that fiscal situation under control. That would improve our economy and it would improve our situation in terms of national security. We'll have to see how far we get with that, especially as a new Congress comes in and the balance of power shifts a little more. A big thank you to Maya McGuinness there, president of the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget. Thanks so much.